Hello everybody, I'm 4040 and welcome back to Kerbal Space Program PvP. Today I am doing a little bit of a spotlight on the different ships in Cryx Industries Arsenal. Uh, I'm doing this as a little bit of a break from the PvP series continuation, uh, the run at the moment, as uh, we're working through some technical stuff to do with the series uh, to get the next step of the series storyline going. So, in the meantime, I'm going to be giving you guys, well, like I said, a little spotlight of the awesome vehicles of Cryx Industries. Uh, so, let's get cracking. Hi everybody and welcome back. This is the Mark 1 Interceptor. I'm just going to decouple that. There we go. This is the Mark 1 Interceptor. This is the first of my ships that was developed. Uh, it has inbuilt solar power, which the panels stick out here and here and on the tops as well. And on the sides, when necessary. Uh, I'm just going to manually toggle these uh, because my shortcut keys for this are, uh, for some reason, changing the file over to this one um, caused them not to work properly. So uh, that's what she looks like with all the panels extended. Obviously, the big panels there are uh, when she is using her iron engines only and uh, will have them sucked in when not deploying them. Now this is an interceptor. I'm going to retract these panels for the moment. There we go. Let's get them in. Now an interceptor was the first type of craft I decided to try and build for Cryx Industries. Uh, typically, let's point this retrograde. Uh, typically the interceptors were always designed to be well armoured and in the storyline they're supposed to have plenty of resources and fuel to be able to stay on station. This first incarnation of the Interceptor was designed to stay on station for a very long time because at the back here we have four, one, two, three, four iron engines which have got an incredibly high economy, economy but very, very low um, output. Uh, inside of the actual craft itself is one large fuel tank, so it didn't have much fuel but alternatively, it also did not have uh, a particularly massive engine. Now, this craft is uh, designed to go up into space and there's a decoupler here which meant I could send this back home and the pilot would be safe from people to attack. So it had its safety systems built in. Its weaponry is specifically designed uh, at the point this was made just to only take out small ships like itself uh, using a barrage. Uh, now let's see if the shortcuts actually work. Why? Okay, uh, so how this barrage would work is you'd fire the engine by throttling off and letting them go. Now, yep, that would be that engine there. Uh, that would be the second engines, and then that would be solar panels and lights. So the way they would shoot this is you'd light the engines first and then let them go. And they fire off set as targets target plus and you throttle up. Fire and off. And they hit in a cluster, they'd be going pretty fast and they knock parts off an enemy's craft. The small weaponry is not designed to hurt too many big things. Uh, the weaponry, like on most of my craft, is all designed to... Now the weapons are out of the way, you can see that all the weaponry is connected by these docking ports so they can be reloaded. And most of the ship is covered in armour plating to deflect pretty much most shots. Now this has deflected, uh, has been in combat before and has been shot at by the same type of ammunition that was just launched. So has been resistant and has been shot at. So that's the Mark 1. It's currently still in service. It's not been replaced. This is the, the the interceptor with the most amount of armor. It's traded, It's it's got not a silly amount of weapons, 
but has got a large amount of armor instead. So, I'm going to move on to the Mark II Interceptor. Hello everybody, and welcome back. I'd like to introduce you to the second of my ships, the Mark II Interceptor, commonly known as the Tsunami. Now, the Mark II Interceptor, as you'll notice, has a little bit less armor than the previous ship. This particular ship is bigger, uh, hull-wise, and it carries a lot more fuel. Instead of having one central tank with an engine leading directly off it, this has one central tank and then two half-sized tanks either side of it, about here and here, within the fuselage. We move around, we should be able that there you go, there's the back end of that particular engine. Now, the covering is on this, it's not going to come off anytime soon, but this has got a different engine setup to the first interceptor. I.e., this holds a lot more fuel, but is less economical because we're not running off solar power alone like the ion engines do. So this instead has two backup. These both two backup engines are less powerful than this engine, but also they're less economical, so they're there for quick bursts of speed. Ah, the night time is setting. Brilliant. So what I'm going to do is very quickly fast forward time so you can see our ship. And come on, okay, let's come around the other side of the planet. There you go. That's that'll do. So, as we were saying, uh, this ship is uh, designed with having uh, more firepower than the previous ship and also having more utility uh, by being able to carry very small payloads on the tips of the wings. If you notice here, we're carrying two microsatellites, but we could carry other things as well. The microsatellites are my own little design. They're very cheap, cheerful, and very, very simple. Now, this particular interceptor uh, type actually has a better weapons capability than the first one. The reason being is the first one only was able to fit these type of small uh, firearms inside of its uh, weapon space because the weapon bays are enclosed whereas this ship i've made the weapons bay not enclosed so they are more vulnerable like i said this is a more of a, is less armored than the previous ship but has more fuel and can actually go a lot further out uh, into the kerbal the world of kerbal into the uh, past out of kerbal's influence here and to the other planets uh, due to the fact that I've had less armour, and I'm not constricted to what size, uh, it can carry a variety of different types of munitions. Now, as you can see here, if I get rid of that, there we go, we have got two different types. These particular slots here are reserved primarily just for the small weapons, because the backblast from these large weapons is so huge that you will damage things as they leave. So, the two wingtip mounts and the nose mounts are all interchangeable, and again, Docking ports mean that I can reload this in space. Beyond that, it's not designed to re-enter atmosphere, so once this has been launched, the pilots can't actually get home, unlike in the first variant. So, no parachutes, no decoupling. They are set to stay in space, or be rescued by a shuttle buzz, I guess, if anything goes wrong. Uh, the also good part about this ship, which is a slight improvement, is it has a less of a reliance on solar power. You notice there's only a couple of very small solar panels just scattered about the craft. Uh, on the underside as well is exactly the same. Uh, they are just there uh, for backup power generation. It has internal power generation for the small nuclear, uh, the small ionic nuclear power generators, which is more than enough for just to have the run lights and to keep the subsystems running. It doesn't need electricity that much unless it's actually on a mission, and it has enough batteries to have a large amount stored. Uh, the way that this particular ship runs, if I get rid of the resources tab, and I press I because this has an info drive installed on it, I can show you that I have uh, toggle engines on 1 and secondary engines on 9. Secondary weapons uh, is on 0, which are these two, which is just one lump firing and the other weapons are organized through two. So, uh, if I press two now, the uh, first shot will fire off. So, three, two, one, fire! Now, as you can see, those are very, very fast. There's not much body to these uh, these little things. They are literally just a, sm a few small of the struts, this little, uh, the little box struts things, and decouplers. And decouplers are just so powerful that they can catapult these things to high speed. So the weaponry on these things, they're not designed to explode, 
Uh, what it's designed to do is just get the maximum speed out of the smallest of objects, so these are designed to break stuff off as opposed to destroy an entire item. On the other hand, we have got the large weapon, which are these big boys. So, firing in 3, 2, 1... No. Uh, there you go. Now those things are slower, but a lot more heavier, and these are designed to absolutely destroy large vehicles. So this ship is, in its current configuration, is designed to be able to take care of itself. It's supposed to be multi-purpose, it's supposed to be able to get up to a target, and it's supposed to sit there even after it's expended its most majority of its payload, because it can be reloaded, and it can be used as a recon tool. So that's uh, the Tsunami. So that's the roundup of the two interceptors that uh, Crux Industries currently employs. They're both in use and they're both designed to stay up on station and they're both designed to have quite a bit of armour and take a few hits before anything bad happens to them. Now I'm going to move on to the two specialist type of small craft that Crux Industries uses. Uh, the first type are going to be the bombers and the second type are the assault ships. So I'm going to bring out the bombers first, so I'll see you in a second. Hello everybody and welcome back. This is the first of the bombers of Cryx Industries. This is the Firestorm, it's a Mark 1 bomber. Now this bomb, all the bombers are designed to do, they've got no armour whatsoever, they're complete glass cannons and they're designed to do one thing and one thing only, get to a target and smash it, then go home. Now as you can see this has a rather impressive loadout, it fires four double shots at angles to each other so that the ship isn't uh, blown up. It also has a nose mount. Now that nose mount was designed for it to be able to attach to a mothership of some kind and refuel if necessary. Now this is also a very long ranged craft. It has fuel all down the middle there, very much like the first interceptor. In fact this and the first interceptor kind of break the same from the same development kind of think tank brainchild. One single thing down the middle and everything built off it. Uh, now the main difference between this and the Interceptor obviously no armour and this can carry a lot more weaponry than the Interceptor can designed to do one thing and that's to come out and strike. Now this has, you notice, an insane amount of battery scattered all over it and that's because it runs off iron engines and these iron engines run off these solar sails which should work That'll be it. There's the solar sails. Out they pop. There we go. Now, this is designed a little bit like perhaps the Lancaster bombers of World War Two that the, U uh, the UK used to use, which meant a fairly slow, fairly heavy, a little bit defenceless against um, against fighters but designed to pack one hell of a slow punch and designed to have a lot of range. The iron engines here give them an insane amount of range as long as you have the time to kill. They take the time to get there. These iron engines are brilliant for doing short manoeuvres or doing extremely long manoeuvres that you don't mind taking all day over, whereas this mainline engine would give it very quick energy. And the majority of its manoeuvres really should be done with its iron engines, which it has an impressive amount. Uh, so, that's the Mark 1 fire. Uh, it's the Mark 1. It's called the Firestorm. It can be loaded with any payload. This is its maximum. It's it. It could have more of these stacks on, but it makes it too unwieldy. The craft just stops being able to respond. So, in the meantime, let's see if we can fire anything. There we go. Those are the two shots as they fire off. They're exactly the same shots as uh, the heavy weaponry on the first one. We fire in one go, and let's see if we get another shot in. Yeah! Now, this ship is pushed backwards at quite a speed whenever these fire. It slows me down. If I fire these too much and I'm in low orbit, it'll actually cause me to crash, um, which is not good. As you can see, all of its systems are completely open. 
which is kind of bad if anything attacks this. It is completely and utterly vulnerable. It's a complete glass cannon, as Mod uh, commented uh, that the bombers are. Now this also has a little bit of survivability, as you notice that they have parachutes around the uh, around the cockpit here, and it is designed here to eject. These boosters push the cockpit away from the main body of the ship as it enters atmosphere, and allows the ship uh, the pilots to survive. Uh, thus denying the kill to the enemy once it has done its mission. So it really is designed not to stay on station because it's just too soft. Do numerous attacks, try and expend all its ammunition, hit as many targets as possible and then come back home. Hello everybody and I'd like to welcome you back to the Mark II Bomber, the Dark Saber. Now this air uh, instant Unlike the Interceptors, where the Mark I and the Mark II both have their own uses, this is a direct evolution of the first bomber. In other words, this has completely superseded the first bomber uh, in several ways. Its cargo capacity and weapons layout is a lot bigger, it got two more shots. It also has, even though it doesn't have iron engines, it's not reliant on electricity to power it, so it has nuclear engines, allowing it to be a lot faster, and it can carry a lot more fuel because of the wide body design that we have gone for. Uh, otherwise, this is uh, much less the same features as the previous bomber. It has a detachable cockpit that is designed to come off when it enters atmosphere, and it has no real armour. It does, because of its lack of solar panels, have a lot of a narrower, more sleek line profile. So this, as I said, the first one, the Firestorm is like the... Uh, old propeller-driven uh, bombers from World War II. This is more of a sleek thrust uh, thruster um, jet powered fast bomber which is designed to get to a target quickly and decimate it with a lot of additional weaponry. Again, this has the uh, patented Kyrex Industries uh, docking port clamps on the back there, which means that not only is its payload reloadable, uh, which means I can set up a utility vest with lots of these strings of bombs to put onto it, but at the same time it's also interchangeable so I can load it with smaller or larger payloads as sees fit. Again, it is somewhat lacking in the defensive capabilities. These are, the bombers are truly glass cannons. If anyone hit would hit it, it pretty much is plastered in uh, essential components around the outside, so any hit anywhere will pretty much devastate it. So this is not designed to stay in space and fight a war. It's designed to go out, do a fast strike, and then get home quickly. It also isn't designed to land. It's kind of designed to burn up in the atmosphere and save the pilot. So they are a little bit disposable, but uh, hey, here at Cryx Industries, disposable is our second name. Apart from pilots, we like pilots. This also has a, a nice little upgrade that the the pilots uh, the pilots are in here. It has double the pilot capacity, which means I can, if necessary, send a pilot out to go and fix things, or go and pilot a ship that's been abandoned, or to investigate something that I've shot. So that's a nice little upgrade. So uh, that's the uh, bombers both finished. So next, uh, the last category of ships that Clark's Industries fields are the assault ships, 